It's been another action-packed week of pro racing with races in Argentina, Australia and the Netherlands. But we're going to start out on the normally very sunny island of Mallorca in Spain. Now the Challenge Mallorca is a series of four back-to-back one-day races. An interesting and relatively unique concept which means that riders don't have to finish any particular day or start any one particular day in order to compete in the next. John Dagenkolb chose to start the first and the last races and he couldn't really have got his own season or that of his team Trek Segafredo off to a better start winning them both in a bunch sprint. Now Mallorca treated the team very well in fact, with newly signed 26 year old Tom Scoyens getting to raise his arms on day three, on what was a punchy day out to say the very least. Now feast your eyes on this for a hard day in the saddle. Day two meanwhile belonged to Tim Wellens of Lotto Sudal, just as it did last year in fact. Now the notoriously difficult stage to Dea was made even tougher by the weather. But Wellens, well he excels in this sort of conditions, particularly in the rain, so it wasn't too much of a surprise to see him at the head of affairs, comfortably out sprinting Gianni Moscon of Team Sky. In fact the result was even less surprising if you'd seen Wellens Instagram posts from a couple of days previously. He'd netted a 10 minute personal best power in training a monstrous 513 watts at 71 kilograms. Now if you've got access to a power meter, go and see how long you can sustain that sort of power for, just to put things into a little bit of perspective. And it may certainly give you a renewed admiration for pro cyclists. The Trofeo Serra do Tremontana was also, incidentally, the second race back for Mobistar's Alejandro Valverde after his horror crash at last year's Tour de France. He finished third after riding a particularly aggressive race, so it seems there is definitely still life in the old dog yet. Over to Argentina now and the Vuelta a San Juan, where stage one winner and Colombian super talent Fernando Gaviria of Quick Step Floors was unfortunately forced to abandon and headed to hospital after a heavy crash on stage four. It did open the way though for his teammate from Argentina, Max Ricchese, to win the stage but it was small consolation for the Quick Step team, who will be hoping this doesn't interrupt an important spring campaign for the 23 year old. Ryan Mullen won his first pro race outside of the Irish National Championships with victory on the stage three individual time trial. A great start to his first race with Trek Segafredo. He did though have to rely on some help from a local cycling fan after getting lost on his way back from the subsequent press conference. Teammate Giacomo Nizzolo concluded the race with a sprint victory, his first win for over a year. And that's made five wins in six days for Trek Segafredo. So instead of Rider of the Week, we have our first ever Team of the Week, thoroughly deserved for Trek Segafredo. What a way to start your season. The race overall though belonged to Gonzalo Naha. Never heard of him? No, neither had we. Although perhaps we should have done, given that he's the current Argentinian national road race champion. Now the 24 year old showed everybody a clean pair of wheels on the queen stage, attacking from far out and averaging a whopping 31.5 kilometers an hour on the 15 kilometer 4.5% climb to the line. He soloed to the stage win almost two minutes ahead of anybody else. And from that point on, the general classification was never really in doubt. Across to Australia now for the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race. And it was Jay McCarthy who took his second pro win of his career in the men's race, and with it the second World Tour win of the season so far for Bora Hansgrove. Now the race was run off in sweltering conditions, with the thermometer topping out at a whopping 41 degrees. Now the 164 kilometer race was animated from the flag drop with a five man break going clear that included Dane Lassie Norman Hansen of Aqua Blue and also Katusha's former national Russian road champion Pavel Kachekov. This pair surviving until the final lap of the tough finishing circuit in Geelong. The efforts though enough to reward them with the king of the mountains and sprint jerseys respectively. With the brake absorbed, a reduced peloton hit the final ascent of Chalamba Crescent. And it was here that Lotto Enel Yombo's George Bennett and Bora Hansgrove's new signing and former winner of the Great Ocean Road Race, Peter Keniak, really started to force the pace, splitting the group and sending an elite nine rider group clear, which included Mitchelton Scott's Esteban Chavez, good to see him back, BMC's Simon Gerrins and McCarthy. 
Now the group never really combined as a unit, and with a small chasing group breathing down their necks, it was Chavez who took flight with about three Ks to go, but he was caught as both the lead and chasing group merged within the last 500 meters. McCarthy proved the sharpest in the rush to the line, just pipping a very, very fast finishing Elia Viviani, who had come from a long way back after being part of the chasing group. In form, Darryl Impey rounded out the top three. Now, just take a look at these stats from Velon, showing the sprint efforts of Viviani, Simon Gerens, and Dries Devenance after four hours of racing. Ali Cipollini's Chloe Hoshkin ensured Commonwealth Games selection for Australia with her victory in the women's race, using her renowned sprint prowess to take the sprint from a reduced bunch, again in sweltering conditions, outpacing Mitchelton Scott's Gracie Olvin and Silence's Georgia Bronzini. Preceding the road races was the Race Towards Zero, a 22-lap circuit race, and it was Bora Hansgrohe's Sam Bennett who got the better of Elia Viviani and Still von Hoff in the men's event. The 12-lap women's race was taken by the Inform Annette Edmondson in a very, very close bunch sprint. Georgia Bronzini took second, with Tibco's Kendall Ryan in third. Huga Heide in the Netherlands hosted the final round of the Telenet UCI World Cyclocross Cup at the weekend, simultaneously serving as preparation, of course, for the forthcoming World Championships in Valkenburg. It was really fitting to see both Sanekand and Mathieu van der Poel take the spoils, and those two have really dominated their respective categories this season although the margins of victory certainly give us hope of a very close fought battle this coming weekend. Kant bounced back from a disappointing result the previous week in France, powering away from the midway point of the race, leaving Eva Lechner to settle for second. Another fine performance from British under-23 champion Evie Richards saw her round out the podium. She's a standout favourite for the under-23 rainbow bands. The big news in that race, though, was the crash of former world champion Pauline ferrand Prevot of France and mountain bike champion of the world, Johan Le Neff. Prevot was taken to hospital, but thankfully with no major injuries. She's hoping to compete at the Worlds. Home favourite Mariana Voss took a solid fourth, albeit at 51 seconds. It seems a long shot that she'll take an eighth world title, but you still can't count her out. In the men's race, van der Poel might have crossed the line in first position, but it wasn't quite as convincing as in previous weeks. Current world champion Wout van Aert crossed the line just seven seconds adrift of the Dutchman. Now, before we finish, we must say we were delighted to see Vincenzo Nibali announce that he will make his Tour of Flanders debut this year. Nibali is, of course, better known for his Grand Tour exploits. He's won all three, but he's also no stranger to monument success, having twice won Il Lombardia. And we think we should all applaud him for going outside his comfort zone here. Although we mustn't forget his exploits on the cobbles a couple of years back when he did win the tour. It's going to be fascinating to see how he gets on rubbing shoulders with the hard men of the classics. Right, that's it for this week. We'll be back in the same place. This time next week, we'll be talking through the Volta a Valenciana, the Herald Tour, and the Etoile de Bessage. But first, and of course foremost, the World Cyclocross Championships in Valkenburg. Who will take the coveted rainbow but muddy bands? Find out right here. In the meantime though, you might want to watch this next video with former world time trial champion Emma Pooley in a very special edition of Ask GC Anything. Click just there. And don't forget to like and share this video too.